Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today, we will discuss all about altitude, and we will see the difference between all different altitudes in aviation. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing I would like to clear up is the difference between height and altitude. Altitude is the vertical distance above mean sea level. The height is the vertical distance above earth, or terrain, or Dayton plain, alright? Now let's start with the easiest one, indicated altitude, which is simply the altitude you read directly off your altimeter. You set your Q&H or sea level pressure into your Cosmin window, and whatever the altimeter reads is your indicated altitude. This is the altitude we fly 99.99% .99 of the time. Okay. Next, true altitude. The true altitude is the vertical distance of your airplane above sea level, commonly expressed as feet mean sea level. Many of the aerospace altitudes, terrain figures, airways and obstacles you will find in, on uh, aeronautical charts are expressed in true altitude above mean sea level. Now hold on a second, then what is the difference between indicated altitude and true altitude? Well, think of true altitude as the actual elevation above mean sea level. Have you ever heard of uh, from high to low look out below? Well, it means if you are flying from an, uh, an area of high temperature into an area of lower temperature, your altimeter will overread, making you believe that you are higher than you actually really are. Okay, so this diagram should help you visualize this point better. As you can see, even if the airplane is maintaining 5,000 feet indicated, Keep in mind that 5,000 feet is what is displayed on the altimeter. However, the actual altitude, which is the true altitude, is actually lower. For ground school exams and specifically for GNAV and meteorology, here is the mathematical formula to calculate your true altitude. Next one is pressure altitude. Pressure altitude is the altitude we read off the altimeter when we set the subscale to 1013 hectopascals or 2999 at 2 inches of mercury. This is QNH setting. We set when we at or above the transition altitude. At or above the transition altitude, we fly flight levels, meaning all traffic have their altimeters subscale set to standard barrel, which is 1013 or 2999 at 2 different depending on the uh, the unit uh, they're using. Next, density altitude. By the way, I have already made a video explaining all about density altitude and pressure altitude and what's the difference between the two of them. I have put the link in the description uh, box below. So density altitude is the pressure altitude corrected for a non-standard temperature. It is an altitude that is corrected for both isopressure and temperature. Now, what do we use it for? We calculate density altitude to be able to figure out our aircraft performance, such as takeoff and landing, roll and distances, climb performance, cruise performance, and so on. Again, more insights about the uh, density altitude and pressure altitude are in the video linked in the description box below. You will find everything and it will clear up if you have any doubt about them once and for all. Next, the absolute altitude. Absolute altitude is constantly changing. The absolute altitude is the distance measurement of your airplane above the ground, expressed in feet EGL. You can also find many obstacles and airspace classifications that exist in feet above the ground. For example, radar altimeter or uh, radio altimeter measures the altitude above the terrain presently beneath an aircraft by timing how long it takes a beam of radio waves to reflect from the ground and return to the plane. So radar altimeters generally give readings up to 2500 feet EGL. Now, let us answer this question together. What is the difference between flight levels and altitudes? Well, altitude is what you read directly off your altimeter or indicated altitude. Flight levels, however, is, the, is an altitude but only expressed slightly different. For instance, instead of saying 28,000 feet, we refer to it as flight level 280. 36,000 feet is flight level 360. 
Nothing complicated, just your altitude divided by 100 becomes flight level with only one very important condition. We should be at or above the transition altitude. Like we have said in the beginning of the video, transition altitude is the altitude defined by the state authority at and above which all traffic must switch from local pressure setting or QNH to the standard pressure setting 1013 or 29092. Thereafter, all altitudes become flight levels. Of course, transition altitude, um, it's not an altitude that is set for the entire globe. It differs from country to country, FIR to FIR, and so on. So you just have to um, refer to your um, EIP to be able to find what is the transition altitude in your uh, region. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this short video about altitude. If you have any queries or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, see ya.